guys, this is Ulysses, and I thank you again for watching this video, and thank you uh, Dolly's channel, the JCH channel, for letting me be here. And today we have another video for the Film Report series. And today we're going to be shooting with Rollei's Variochrome. Variochrome. It's kind of hard to say, isn't it? Um, this is actually a slide film. It is limited edition, and apparently no one really knows what it is. From what I know, it is, again, a limited edition um, slide film that was repackaged into something. And the ISO actually is Vario, as the name suggests. It goes from 200 to 400. And it seems like there's a sweet spot to it, um, and, and that's probably 320-ish, so that's what we're going to be shooting on. And also, from what I've seen online and from some images uh, that I've seen from other people, this film is, I would say, it has its own kind of style to it. It's a stylized film, at least from what I see. And what I know is that if you overexpose, you get a lot of orange tint in the, in the, um, in the pictures. And the, there's some blue that's accentuated when you expose it well, and some red that's also works, I would say. Um, and that's basically all I know about it. Um, and yeah, Bellamy approached me to, and asked me if I would shoot with this, and I said, why not? Because it seems like it's limited and it's expensive. Yay! So we will be going to an area called Shinjuku, and what I'm looking for specifically in there is, I guess when I when I hear the word retro or, or, you know, something like old slide film and then I guess what comes to mind is, are like people like maybe like Soul Lighter or people like Ernest Toss that I, that I like personally and Shinjuku has, I would say, you can shoot from above, there's, you know, a lot of people, there are, I think there's many ways that I can try to get that, I would say, vintage -y. Five. Oh, I'm sorry I used that word, but that's all I can say right now, um, with the pictures. But also, there's a park that we can go to that allows us to get a little bit more space, I would say, and test out the colors in different types of situations. So that's what I'm going for, and hopefully, yeah, we can get maybe some pictures that kind of exemplify what this film can do. And yes, let's go. So today we're going to be shooting in Shinjuku and we're going to be shooting with the Ver Variochrome Rolly, Rolly, whichever way you want it. And we're going to be shooting with the Leica M6 and the Sumeron, which is a 35mm f2.8. So um, as you can see, it's a little bit cloudy today, so I'm. it's kind of hard to tell what we're going to get. Um, I think ideally it's better to shoot in the sun to see the results of the film. With the Variochrome, as the name suggests, I guess, um, there's a range of ISO 200 to I think 400. But today we're going to be shooting at ISO 320, which is generally the medium point and what's usually suggested uh, by Rolai. So from what I've seen online um, with the Variochrome, um, when you overexpose you get very orangish or warm results and sometimes it gets a little bit washed out. Um, on the other hand, uh, when you expose it correctly or when you underexpose, you get a lot of bluish tints and there's some red that pops out if there's red in the frame. So we're going to consider that while we're going to be shooting today and let's see what we get. Right now I want to just take a frame here to test out how the color works out. So we have this 
like very bright orange and we have the white and the black pavement and this orange yellow line and a slight pink there. So I want to take a very clean shot just of the ground, fair and square, uh, when everything kind of clears up. Oh, cityscape. Is that something? It's really nothing, isn't it? Should I shoot it? I don't know. I have no idea what I'm gonna get with this film. And I guess a lot of people might say, with film, that's the beauty of it, it where you, you don't know the results, I guess. But if you shoot a film stock enough, you, you can get an idea of generally where you're gonna get, right? Um, in the shot. But yeah, with the roller chrome, I, or the very chrome, I, literally have no idea what I'm getting, which is, I guess, kind of exciting at the same time. So again, this is a slide film, so you can see the colors and the, and the pictures as it is on the film. And let me just say this, this feels like, it looks like what everyone envisions slide film to be back in the old day. <laughs> just like a big stereotype of slide film, as in like, it's very, I don't know, it just feels very vintage. And I'm looking at it, and it feels like a lot of it is, again, there's a lot of that heavy orangish yellowish tint to it. Um, but yeah, we have the prints as well, so let's go into those as well. Uh, looking at the prints, there is a little bit more detail in the color um, than in the slides themselves, I would say. What I feel, my general feeling from the pictures that I got are that, again, yes, they are very heavily, I would say, stylized. And they do, man, I hate saying this so much, but yeah, they do have a very vintage feel to them. And let me try to break that down a little bit more so that I don't sound too much like a doofus. Um, vintage is probably, again, that heavy um, orange cast, but also some blues and greens in the shadows that I see. And those color casts are what we think happens usually, or what we envision uh, when we think of vintage uh, film looks, I would say. Also, another general feeling that I got is that a lot of the pictures that I wanted to kind of see what happens with more, I would say, atmospheric shots or, or shots with like close-ups or detail shots, I would say, yeah, they seem to work a little bit more with this film. Uh, and yeah, they actually look kind of nice. Especially with some nice light, um, with some nice textures, 
like this picture that I shot of the koi in the water. This is probably, you know, props to the film itself, but also props to the slide film, I would say. You get the color in the water and you get all these textures within the highlights in both the shadows as well. I think if we shot digital, then, I don't know, either the highlights or the shadows would kind of, might be blown out or be kind of washed away. Oh yeah, I like this shot. I also wanted to talk about some things that I personally feel like didn't really work out or some things that I personally didn't like too much uh, that came out from the film. One thing is that, um, yeah, definitely the skin tones render kind of strangely. <laughs> As I said, this shot, I, I think maybe it's slightly overexposed or, but it's about, it's about right. And yeah, the tones seem very pinkish and very washed out on the yellow end. Uh, and yeah, if we're shooting portraits with this, and maybe that may not work. So the photos that I think worked out were, I think, the more nature-oriented ones. Natural photos, that we call them. But yeah, this, this photo with, with these flowers, I think, came out really beautifully. Uh, yeah, it, it has this retro-ish feel to it, but it's not, it's not not true to life as well. It's, it's pretty accurate, I think, in terms of the colors. And also, I don't know, just the, just the mood of it feels really nice. And having that, especially that bouquet in the foreground, I think really kind of creates this dreamy atmosphere. And this is definitely something that I would go for with this film. And yeah, I think as a guest, yeah, the, the reds render really well, I think. Um, and I don't know, I might ask a second opinion on this, so. Uh, Bellamy, do you want do you want to talk about the the, the results with me? Uh, yeah, <laughs> scoot Trevor. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right. Okay. You know when you watch a movie and they make a movie about Mexico, right? And it's always yellow. Mexico is always yellow. Yeah. This yeah. this film would be Mexico film. This is Mex <laughs> this is Mexico film. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's got that tint to it, and it lends itself really well to that okay. as a, again cinematic experience of. Uh, you know, uh, architecture and landscape and skin tones is rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you want to call this the Breaking Bad intro filter or...? <laughs> Breaking Bad film. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sicario's the, the, the film. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's kind of cool. Uh, you can see that it's very, very expired. <laughs> Very expired, yes. Um, it's, I, I think it was found this <laughs> one. I mean, come on. Um, but then again, that's got that sort of 70s vibe. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, oh, I found my photo album from my grandma under the stairs and what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, except if you tried to convince your grandkids, oh no, we took this in 2020. <laughs> what? <laughs> what were you shooting? How? How? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a story to tell you. Um, but yeah, it makes for some interesting effects. Um, I guess that we will probably be the only ones that get to see, because good luck getting your hands on some of this stuff. How how much is the film? Oh, or they're not they're not available. But well, you can't right? get it anymore. Um, you have to go on eBay and, and find somebody who's selling a roll. But I think they're probably trying to ask for about eighty dollars for a roll, mm. which is. Wow. A lot of money. Eighty dollars. Uh, yeah. Um, it was only produced in a very small batch. Um, I think about five or six thousand rolls were manufactured. Um, so what that would lead me to assume is that they found a, a big old batch of film in a freezer and went, "Oh, looks like we need to clear some space. <laughs> <laughs> right? What should we What should we stick on the box for this one?" And they they made a very cool box. I'll give them that. They did make a very cool box. So. Mm -hmm. I think it was a good thing because it drummed up a lot of interest for people who may maybe hadn't seen film or, or mm. weren't familiar with uh, film still being released, mm. you know, so that did bring some attention. So this was released when was it? 2017. Okay, so, it, so in that sense, having a film released or re-released or whatever you want to call yeah. it was pretty cool because yeah. that doesn't 
generally happen too much yeah, these days. I think it really helped with the resurgence um, vibe because you know other stuff was coming out that year. We released Street Plan 120, mm -hmm. Cindy still released their 50D yeah. same year, so I think there was a this sort of role going on, this vibe, and everybody wanted to mm -hmm. get in on this this aesthetic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had to chuck that word. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I was also thinking. So this is it's it is slide film. Yeah. But yeah, the the feeling that I got was strangely. I was talking about this previously, but kind of anti slide slide film. Yeah, it's because. It's, yeah, I, I don't know, because, well, I've used Provia and Velvia in the past, and Ectochrome as well, and you look at the slides and they're very saturated, yeah, they, you get the colors, right? Yeah, they pop out at you, and this kind of hits you like a wet flannel, it's like... Ugh. It looks like an <laughs> inverse negative. Yeah, it, it does, it almost feels as if there's nothing there. Um, I mean, it's still nice, you're still getting to see it in the way that it's slide, but it's muted. Yeah, definitely. Because it's a vario, you know, you kind of guesswork as to what mm -hmm. the optimum film uh, speed setting is, mm -hmm. you know, um, the ISO setting is, so it's kind of hit and miss, and at 80 bucks a pop it's a real miss if you miss. Yeah, because you know? it's a slide film, but it's yeah. a vario, so I'm, yeah. like, the more I think about it, the more conf I'm confused about and, it, to be honest. And I think there was a novelty aspect to this as well, because pretty much nobody has shot vario slide film. I mean, there was only a handful of different companies that released actual vario slide film, and it was usually for highly commercial mm. uh, operations and so the general public didn't get to see it, they didn't get to shoot it. Another feeling that I got was actually like some of the pictures, I think with the green cast? Yeah, some of them did. Fuji -esque. Yeah, some of them certainly like, did. Oh, yeah. yeah, like the cityscapes, you know, the glass, it really sort of, um, it really picks up and sort of exacerbates that green nuance. Got it. Got it. Um, I, I think if had it been a bit of a brighter, more impactful mm. slide film, you'd have, you'd have this pinkish, purplish, blue, red here, yeah. and the green there. It would be almost aesthetic. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you'd have yeah, that, yeah. that Tokyo 80s vibe, uh, uh, you know, that would really work. It's just off, mm -hmm. you know, that's from that, being there. Yeah, that's why I feel like when I look at this, I could totally see it being just a normal like, negative, not yeah, slide. Yeah. Yeah, so it was interesting in the, I think the experience itself was interesting. And yeah. it's not, it's not like it's blown out. I no, like, sure. The, the highlights I mean, it's there. really well, it's really well exposed. I mean, I, I think this is like, this is one or two stages off being a, a good, a really good film, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, uh, development stages, you know, sure, sure. and I think uh, because it's only a, a limited edition, you know, mm -hmm. you're never going to get to see it optimal, uh, but you yeah. can see the potential. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can see the potential in this film uh, being a lot better. Especially, yeah, going back to some pictures with like the red and oh yeah, blue. because the reds are really great, aren't Where they? Go. Yeah, yeah, like this. Yeah, nice. and this. This, one. this is lovely. This yeah. is absolutely lovely. The colors. Yeah, I was looking. So, so this person had like a red, orangish. Yeah, you can um, see piece and, of cloth, and and it really sort of it bounces off the darks and the greens and the blues yeah. and the and it pops out like yeah. it's not it's not. What would you say? It's like this color isn't washed out. No, yeah. no, it's and it's it, it's layers very well. It it looks great. Yeah, so this worked, I think. I think, and fun. again, because it's a what was it? It's a 400, 320, 200, Nobody knows. Yeah, it it's kind of grainy, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know when you think slide film, your automatic your brain's automatic reaction is yeah. Velvia, super sharp, bright colors. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why isn't it doing those things that my brain says it should be doing? Mm. Uh, it's not quite the same film, but it has its own vibe. Let me nerd out of it and yeah. say that when I think like slide film, as you said, like there is that level of potential to it. Oh. My pickup. It's here. For real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no. Um, so, like, historically, I, a lot of serious color photographers shot Kodogram. Yes, yes. And yes. obviously now we don't have it. Yeah. But there are some photographers that I like in Magnum, let's say, mm -hmm. that sh that have shot in things like Velvia mm -hmm. or or Probia mm -hmm. or Ectochrome. Yeah. And interestingly, those options are still around. Like so, yeah. and and there's there's a photo book by uh, by Trent Park. Mm -hmm. um, he's in 
Magnum, and he has his book called The Crimson Line. Uh, mm -hmm. that I think just came out this month, and I think most of those shots were shot in ectochrome. Mm -hmm. So possibly. So yeah. I think what I want to say is that there is that very high, even untouched level potential that that most people actually just don't use because of you know the, the complications of generally using film these days, sure. but also the price and how unforgiving positive film generally is right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I see something like this, and I could definitely see the 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 potential in shooting these slide films in a long term basis. Okay, so you think yep. all things considered, would you shoot Vario Crime again? Yeah. Well there's so many I would say variables with Vario Chrome. Uh, See what I did there, yeah. but um, the thing is, you know, the price availability in terms of that, it's pretty much physically impossible to yeah. shoot it. Yeah. My my answer to that would be, I still want to try shooting continuously on slide film sometime. Yeah, um, and that's that's my answer. And and but but shooting with this kind of helped me reach that mm, reach that confidence as well mm. because, you know, to be honest, like for these reports or reviews or whatever like I don't expect to get anything out of the roles like they're they're experimental and I'm having fun with them yeah but you know sometimes you know regardless when you get like photos like these that you can see kind of work out yeah then it's when I have this in my mind in the back of my mind when I shoot I don't know with some other slide film some other time mm. then I could be like oh maybe these are the kinds of things I should go for. These are the lighting situations that I look out for. These are the colors I should be concentrating on. Yeah. And this is the kind of framing and, and you know, all these things. And th that I think it's the same with other slide films as well. So yeah, I I learned a lot shooting on Veracrome. Mm. And hopefully I can bring these learnings um, yeah. to my shooting with other public films in the near future. A learning role. Yeah. 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 It was an expensive education, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, education is never cheap, they say. Good, oh, yeah. Good well, education. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching this video. Uh, so, this is Yossi Izaoki on the JCH channel. And sorry, but please go check out my channel as well. Uh, I'll be very helpful if you don't think I'm too obnoxious, then yes, I have a few good videos and a lot of trash videos, but please check it out. In terms of the film report series, if you guys have any requests for films to test out, then please comment below. Well, I'm sure if there's a request, tell me you can pull something out, maybe. Maybe! <laughs> okay, yeah, so again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.